Well, good afternoon, YTPC. This is Dave, coming to you from the paddock in Southern Maryland. It's Saturday, around uh, about 2 p.m. First thing I want to do is say thanks to David over at Central Cal Piper. He did the uh, he did the YouTube live today, and um, it was really good. I, I'd say there's probably 10 or 12 or 14 of us across the. It was. I lasted about two hours. I don't know how long it ended up going, but <clears throat> it was really nice. So I just want to say thanks, David. That was uh, better than I expected. I, I kind of went into it not knowing what to expect. But to have that many people from around the world, um, it was really nicely done. So I hope we do it again. I hope it won't be too long, but I just want to say thanks, David. That was, uh, that was really cool. So uh, housekeeping. Marilyn Marisham, as always, right? That's not going to change for a while. What's in it today is way different, though. I went with Captain Black Dark. I was tired of fighting Brown Bogey, all the relights. So uh, Captain Black Dark lights and burns fantastic. I'm almost done with my second bowl. Um, I smoked both of them pretty much while well online. But uh, that's what we're doing today. So, guys, this is part four. I've created a playlist on this channel and put all the parts to it because we have part one and part 2A and 2B, and then we have part 3A, 3B, and 3C. So there's actually six videos now required to cover our three parts. So they're all up. They're, that playlist is created. It's publicly viewable, and it'll give you one place to go across all six videos, and then we'll, do, we'll get today's on the playlist as well. So guys, this is where we are. All right, we're in the fourth part. So we've covered the dream, the think, the plan, and now we gotta we gotta get to work. Okay. So session four is doing, and then the next and I think last part will be evaluating how we're doing. All right, guys, this is the hardest part. This is where we actually have to, this is where we begin to actually do things. And you may feel like we've been doing things up till now, but we really haven't. Everything we've been doing is in here, on our pen and pencil, at our desk, at the beach, in our backyard, on our deck. This is where we start to have to go. We have to start doing things that touch the outside world now. Yeah, everything we've been doing has really been truly dreaming about what we want, thinking about how we want it to look, getting our action plan in place. And today we have to actually start beginning to do these things. So by now, coming out of the planning stage, we should have a list of things that we need to do, actual activities. We should know in what order we want to do them. And so we should have some sense of how each how long each one would take, whether it be minutes or hours or days or weeks, right? You don't want month-long bars, right? You want things that are going to, it's going to take me two days to do this, three days to do this, a couple hours to do this, right? You want short, completable, tangible things, right? At the end, these things should be, I've talked to 10 existing competitors, and I know what they price at, right? Um, I need to find vendors for the product parts that I want to produce. Um, just things like that. Nice, tangible, completable tasks. And guys, I've talked to you that most of you probably aren't ready. If you're in this position in your life where you need to or have to do a restart or a start over, you may not be in a position financially to do it. And so what I would suggest is you break it into two paths, and I think you can do them in parallel. Uh, only you know what you can handle, and only you know how big a hole you're in. Guys, the best thing you can do when you find yourself in a hole is stop digging, okay? So let's walk down the preparatory path for a minute, and then I think we'll talk about the go forward plan, and I want to break them apart, and I want to show you i think that we can do them in parallel so let's talk 
about the dig yourself out of the hole, right? It's going to take real action and real time and real commitment to do it. So some examples that I wrote down. You've got to pay off some debt. Maybe you got to sell some items. Maybe you got to, some cars you should sell. Maybe you should sell the two or three cars you have and get down to one beater car with no car payment and really low car insurance. That's a lifestyle change. You know, I just, I don't know what you're willing to do to make this work. All right. But there's an example of something that's very hard. But if you have two big car payments and huge insurance bills, and you dump the two car payments and, and drive a beater with no payment, and your insurance bill gets cut by 80%, that's real change. That's the kind of thing you may need to be willing to do in order to get ready for this restart. Um, you got to also offload expenses, right? So maybe these are some of the first things, if it was me, that I would be doing. I'd be going down all the things I spend money on and killing them. All right, biggest number on top, smallest number on the bottom, and you probably work from the bottom up. Some of you suggested uh, baby steps. God, I can't think of the guy's name right now. But anyway, we'll we'll talk about debt. Maybe we'll talk about debt relief and and debt payoff. It's Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey has that kind of baby steps or staircasing where you you start with your smallest debt, pay it off, and then use that payment and add it to the payment on the next debt. So if you get three credit cards, you pay one off, and you take the payment from that third card and apply it to the second card, and now you're double paying the second card. Pay that off, and now you're triple paying off the third card. And then you've got three payments you can apply to your car or to whatever the next expense is. You gotta start stacking startup cash, and you gotta start stacking operational cash all right so debt relief stacking some cash how much is for startup how much is for operating you really should know those numbers by now and maybe it's zero maybe you have no startup cash maybe you have only debt um, I'm not judging you I don't really care it's just a fact it's a fact you got to stare hard at that cold beast of I have a lot of debt and no cash. Now I got to fix that. And it might take a year or two or three, right? We've talked about it in the past. This prep, just the prep phase of your start over plan may take a year or two or three. Some of these things are not easy. You know, getting rid of your cars, potentially selling your house. Maybe you have too big or too nice a house. Maybe the, maybe the house payment you know, the PITI, the principal interest tax and insurance payment is killing you. And you've got to get into a two-bedroom apartment or depending on your life, a one-bedroom apartment or a studio apartment or you rent a room from somebody, right? These are true lifestyle. Are you willing to make these kind of changes to, to make your life, to get you on firm ground so that you can take off? We're building the foundation of your new life. Thank you, Greg. So the next phase would be lifestyle changes. Things that you probably should stop doing. You should stop buying as hard. In today's world, we are not trained to stop buying, to stop wanting, to stop looking. Browsing and looking is a dangerous thing in today's world. You know, the heart doesn't desire what the eye doesn't see is the old style that like grandma used to say. And so stop buying, stop shopping, no more Amazon orders, no more eating out, stop buying pipes and tobacco and cigars, no more new clothes, no more vacations, right? So. You're paying off your debt. You're selling your cars. You're selling your home. You're stopping these seven or eight things. Buying, shopping, Amazon, eating out, pipes and tobacco and cigars, new clothes, no more vacations. 
there's like eight or ten things you can do starting today that will take probably a year to get done, but you'll transform the financial spreadsheet of your life and actually start generating the ability to start your life over. Hey guys, sorry, I know I've been uh, overdriving the mic a little bit, so I'm aware of it now. We'll see if I can't stop doing it. So guys, we've talked about one stripe. We're going to talk about the go forward strike now. While you're paying things off, you should know how long it's going to take to pay each thing off, right? You should have dates associated with what working all the way up. And um, if you have three credit cards, <clears throat> how long will it take to pay the, the smallest one off? Like one month? Today? Two weeks? Two months? And then once you apply that payment to the second one, how many payments, how, long, how quickly can you pay it off? No to the day, no to the week, no to the month where each debt gets paid off. You got to stick to it. Um, if you're trying to stack some startup cash, how much do you need and how is it weekly? Is it monthly? I can't even start till a year from now. You should know based on debt payoff when you can start putting start start stacking cash and how much do you have now, right? So you need a plan that's really detailed to to pay things off and stack cash. All right. So now let's talk about while you're doing that, if you have the time and the drive you can start your go forward. You could actually start, you got to start searching for customers. All right. Where are they going to come from? Where do they go now? Who offers the product or service you're offering? Is it truly a whole? And the answer is no one. Is that true? Have you verified that? Most likely somebody offers something close to it in your area. So if someone offers your product or your service, how are they found? How do people find them? How much do they charge versus what you think you're going to charge? Guys, this is what's called, if you want a buzzword, called market research. You need to do market research. You need to go out and find where are your clients? How many are there? How do you know that? How do they find you? You know, how do they find the product and service that you're offering, like where do they go to look for it? You know, is it the billboard at the post office? Is it the billboard at the grocery store? Probably not, but that's one option. Um, you just need to do full market research. How big is the market out there for your product or your service? Where do they go to find it? And who offers it now? Who are your competitors? If there's three or four, you know, I keep using the car mechanic example. Are there 10 car mechanics? What are their specialties and what do they charge, right? You can do all that market research while you're paying off debt, right? I realize debt repayment takes, takes your income and so can't all get done tomorrow. So there's a lot of downtime, right? It could be a very slow year as long as you stick to your plan. So maybe during that year, you cut over and you start doing your market research. You don't have to actually really spend any money or do anything to do that. Just get a sense of the market you're about to enter. The other buzzword, if you like him, is SWOT. You need to do a SWOT analysis. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. What are your strengths? And why do you think you have them? List them. I mean, write them down, right? This is not some in-your-head project. These are the skill sets or of, of my service or my product, right? These are the strengths I'm gonna bring into my market. Um, weaknesses are probably cash, no one knows your name, no one knows you're doing it, right? Those kind of things. What are the weaknesses about of what you're gonna do? <clears throat> the threats are pretty much your competitors, changing marketplace, world economy, the local economy. Is it strong and getting weaker? Is it weak and getting stronger? You need to know this. Um, you need to have a good sense. 
of strengths and weaknesses and opportunities and threats. You should be able to come up with a list of services you're going to provide, a list of products you're going to provide, a list of franchises you're going to research, and begin to go down them individually. You can do all this in parallel to your prep sessions. And if it takes you a year or two or three to get ready to pull this trigger, and you do all this kind of research for two or three years, you will be an expert before you ever pull a trigger or spend a dollar on what you intend to do in the environment that surrounds what you intend to do. These are critical steps. If you have the time and the drive, they can be done in parallel. Because if you start them, if it takes you two years to get prepped and a year to do your market research and really identify these things, now you got a three-year plan versus you could have had it done in two years because you did it in parallel. So just consider how much time you're willing to put into this. How important is it really to you? Are you willing to make time adjustments in your life to, to do these things? The third part of this is you got to track how you're doing. All right. You have this long list of action items with in order and how you think how long each one will get take to get to the completion. And if you're doing a suggest, you'll have two that are side by side. I mean, literally, maybe two sheets of paper with your prep plan and then your go forward plan in rank order of how to do things done. But you have to go through it. How are you doing? And the question I would have for you is how are you progressing down each, each list or if you're just doing with one long list, just how are you progressing? So it's are you progressing on one list or two? That's up to you. I don't know what kind of time or commitment, how much sleep you need. I don't know what your current situation uh, requires of you time-wise. I don't know how much time you can free up and apply to this. Uh, But how well are you doing? And then the other question you need to ask is how good are you at scheduling? How, long, how good are you at estimating how long things take? Once you've done five or six of them, you'll know, hey, I'm pretty spot on, or I'm, I'm off by a factor of two, or I'm off by a factor of a half, meaning I'm getting things done twice as fast as I thought it would, or they're taking 10 times longer than I expected, which is probably more towards the end of what you'll find. Typically, we underestimate. We're too aggressive on our ability. We're too aggressive on how responsive people are. We're too aggressive on how much time I have to apply to this. We're too aggressive on how dedicated you're going to be to this every day, seven days a week, 52 weeks for four or five years. Some people just cannot handle that kind of commitment. So you plan that way, but you execute differently. You need to understand the difference between your planning and your execution skills. And then you have to apply that to the rest. All right. So if you have 200 things you need to complete, you've done five and you're off by a factor, it's really taking you three times longer than you thought. You have to go back down your list and put some reality into it so you don't keep missing all your dates. It won't be fun to take a one year plan and realize it's three years because of your execution skills. That's not fun but you have to do it or you're going to quit because you're going to miss every date. It's going to take you longer than you thought and you just get demoralized. So do it. I would do it. Me, I would do it every day, every day that I accomplish what I expected myself to. How well did I do it? How good was my plan? And I reallocate. I do that every day because that forces me to stay on it. At least do it once a week. You know, don't go a couple months out and go, oh, my God, I, you know, I'm way off base. Do it every day or at least once a week and pick a day and time to do it. It's cliche, but Sunday nights are usually when people do this kind of thing. You know, it's the end of the day. It's the end of the week. You sit there and you're getting ready to plan out next week. And you say, how good did I do this week? And maybe you do daily touch ups. But then at the end of the week, you actually do a replan based on the week. Okay. Um, you're also going to ask yourself some questions. 
am I getting stuck? And why are you getting stuck? Like I got these eight done, but these three I'm going nowhere with. We got to figure out why. And more importantly, the most important question you need to ask yourself is, are you procrastinating? Are you just procrastinating getting started? Are you procrastinating on 80% of the items you picked a couple because they looked easy, but you're not progressing down your plan? You really need to know that about yourself. You know, typically, they, you know, we always say we're looking for self-starting people. Well, you have to be self-starting, right? You have to enter this program. You know, you've got to do the, the three stages to even get here. You've got to discipline yourself to walk the plan. You've got to be able to assess how you're doing against your own plan. And pretty quickly, right? Don't procrastinate determining if you're procrastinating, right? That helps no one. It will only demoralize you if you just keep if you keep lying to yourself. If you can't keep commitments to yourself on this plan, it's gonna be hard to be a businessman. Um, it's gonna be hard to have a profitable restart at the end of this. I think we're gonna end it there, guys. We're uh try to keep this thing a little shorter. I really struggled through the series to produce something that's intelligible and consumable and yet has enough detail to be helpful. So I feel like this one's a little thin, but the points are there, the strategies are there, my recommendations are there. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and stop this, assemble all the pieces, I'm going to shut up and get this thing uploaded. So guys, I know this series is dense, it's complicated. It's uh, perilous. I mean, you are talking about real changes. And if you're not alone, if you're married and got kids, you're talking about mega changes to the people that are close to you. Hope this helps. Um, I'm truly pouring myself into these, trying to do, provide you help. Um, I hope it's landing well. And um, we'll come back and finish up uh, the series with part five of the reevaluation. Um, I think we'll do it tomorrow on Sunday. Guys, that's it. Talk to you later. Bye.